I'm on it. I'm so on it. However you own it, you can get it tonight, ho. And all night, ho. I get the beat from my A fucking right. All right. First tank of gas. That means I got to reset the trip. So I have no idea what kind of cars are going to be at this, uh, this meetup. But apparently there's going to be some pretty fast ones. Like a couple with over a thousand horsepower. Which, uh, I've only seen one street car I've, I've known with over a thousand horsepower. And it was fast as f I wasn't on my bike though, I couldn't race it. That's kind of the disappointing part. I've never actually had anybody in a vehicle want to race me. I'm kind of upset about it, because there's usually... I hear from a lot of people that, uh, you know, if you're on a bike, everybody wants to race you, but that is not the case with me. I've never, never had anybody want to race me. It's kind of unfortunate, but I mean, this is basically the fastest thing out on the road that costs less than ten thousand dollars. There's the thousand horsepower five O. Look at this faggot. Looking like a bitch. What the f happened to your eye, man? No way. So my brother's obviously in the Sonoma. His buddy Nathan is in the G8 right in front of me. Another guy named Brennan is in the TA, and I can't think of the dude's name in the... Yeah, like... Idiots. Mistaken, and I think my brother's truck is uh, dog tailing it right now. That's kind of funny. In case you don't know what dog tailing is, that means your axle's in slightly skewed, or at not quite uh, a straight, you know, 90 degree angle from your drivetrain. So. Uh, it's your back end seems like it's not quite riding in a straight line. My brother just did a burnout. Whipping that thing around. Oh sh that's a CTSV. Sounds dirty. Yeah, I don't like those clouds. Doesn't really look like it's raining. But I mean we are going north. G8 sounds nice. Well, no car meetup for me because uh, it looks like crap over there. And the radar agrees. So I am not going. Neither is the TA or my brother. fast enough to lean into a turn really good. Is it because I'm a pussy? Probably. 
Ever since my wreck, I've been sketch of uh, turns. Because uh, I was going around a turn, and you know, it wasn't even a, a fast turn at all. It was a turn out in the back roads, somewhere where I live, or around where I live, riding with my buddy Ryan. And uh, he was leading, I was following. And it was a it was a recommended 10 mile per hour turn, you know, like 90 degrees, really tight. So, you know, I wasn't going over 15 miles an hour for this turn. And I'm being honest, you know, I I take those roads seriously, especially whenever they're, uh, you know, really slow turns or whatever. So, I was going around this turn, I was following my buddy, I was taking the exact same line that he was, and he hits the hits the turn goes through nice and easy I'm doing 15 going around the turn the exact same line or so I thought at least what I could see it was the same line and enter the turn I'm about halfway through and my back end slides out about 45 degrees and it's all over from there I don't high side it I don't low side it it immediately re-catches traction after it slides out and I'm not wearing uh, proper riding shoes I'm wearing stupid little slip-ons slip-on uh, like I don't know Nike 6 O's or something you know I'm, I'm also wearing khaki shorts and my uh, my riding jacket so you know no leg protection no feet protection but you know I've got my leather jacket and my helmet on and my gloves so I mean, you know I'm halfway covered but you know obviously not as safe as I could have been and so after it catches traction again uh, it whips me back and it throws me like up over like the nose cone like not off the bike but I'm barely hanging on for dear life I've probably look like one of those MotoGP guys that's trying to regain their bike after they're like flicked up and off of it and then eventually I come to and I get control I'm uh, not control but you know I have more control than I had I'm on the seat my feet are off the pegs and you know my hands are still on the bars and I I look up and I look to see where I'm going you know this is this is all happening within you know less than a second maybe half a second or something and I see that I'm headed straight off the road towards like a ditch and this wasn't just no normal ditch this was like a three foot thing off the off the side of the road because this was you know again a country back road that didn't have you know lines on the road it was barely paved so I literally ramp off this thing into this ditch and as soon as I do that you know I'm back back into control or, or what I think is control I got my hands on the handlebar still I got my feet on and I'm actually riding it in the in this ditch and I'm like holy shit, holy shit. Uh, I need to try and see if I can't get this thing out of there and about that time as soon as I think I should probably try and lean to get it out I lean it this way and as soon as I do it just dumps because you know I'm riding on all these leaves and grass and nasty shit. and so as soon as it dumps you know I, my heart drops it's it's just gone I'm just like holy crap I just put down my bike and to be honest like the first thought that ever went through my head as soon as I felt my back tire slide out from under me was I can't believe this is happening to me like that was the first thought not I hope I'm gonna be okay I hope my bike's gonna be okay I can't believe this is happening to me so I dump it and, you know I'm in the grass and leaves so surprisingly I get up unscathed there's not very not very much that's on me and actually whenever I did go down I went down close enough to the side of the road that my right shoulder and my helmet actually hit the ledge of the road that I had ramped off of not not the exact one that I ramped off of but you know I had gone down and was close enough to the road that when I laid it down you know my shoulder and my head actually hit the road and so you know luckily I was wearing my leather jacket and my helmet because you know that that probably saved me a concussion and probably you know maybe a 
a decent amount of road rash. So luckily I was wearing that kind of protection, but uh, eventually I see my bike come to a stop. I'm on the ground, I get up immediately and uh, go for it because I'm freaking out. Sorry, I was burping there. I had never put my bike down. It was my baby, it was my life, and I just put it through hell. And so I pick it up immediately. It takes my friend a, like a minute to realize that I'm not behind him. He turns around. I get a good look at my bike, and yeah, like this this piece of plastic's gone. Uh, this fairing here is a little uh, fractured and broken. Uh, the bottom fairing was a piece of that, like on the very back on the bottom. Uh, that thing was completely torn off. And, I mean, other than that, uh, not really a whole lot of damage. I got some scratches on this. The nose cone right here got a little bit of scuffing. You know, nothing too terribly bad. I ended up did getting a, uh, a new set of plastics. The, the biggest thing that I was surprised was my gas tank didn't get a scratch on it. Uh, actually, right on, the, right on the inseam here, there's a little paint chip. But other than that, it came out unscathed. And I was very, very thankful for that because this gas tank costs just as much as buying an, an entire new, entirely new fairing kit for my R6, which I am kind of upset about, but, you know, it, it didn't get scratched, so I didn't need to buy it because this is all metal. I got an O2R6, so this is, this is metal. This isn't actually, this is the gas tank. Uh, there isn't just like a plastic cover that you put over it But yeah, that's my wrecking story had to call my parents told them that I wrecked my bike. I was all right, but And to be honest now I actually like to look at my bike a lot better. I like the fairings a lot better Ambition is priceless something that's in your veins And I put that on my name Uh.